Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for something very, very special. I'm going to drive James Bond's Aston Martin DB5. This is the new DB5 Goldfinger continuation. It is a new old car featuring the gadgets from the movies. We've got things that we can demonstrate later, like the machine guns. We've got battering rams, rotating number plates. There's smoke and oil out of the back. We've got big bulletproof shield. We've got the ejector seat, the radar inside. And I'm going to be driving this absolutely beautiful thing today from where we're starting at Stoke Park, which has featured in a number of the James Bond movies, up to Aston Martin Works, where the new car is now assembled in the same location as the original DB5s back in the 60s. This is going to be something quite exciting. James Bond's DB5. The Aston Martin DB5 to me is the most iconic of James Bond's cars, having appeared in eight movies wearing the BMT 216A number plate. It started with a debut back in 1964 in Goldfinger and goes all the way through now to its eighth appearance in No Time to Die alongside three other Aston Martin models as well. But this car we're looking at here, despite appearances, is in fact a brand new car. It is a prototype ahead of the run of 25 units that are being made of the DB5 Goldfinger continuation that will be assembled in the same plant as the originals where we're going to be heading later on and we can also have an experience of all of the gadgets that it has as well. Back in the 1960s, between 63 and 65, Aston Martin assembled 900 of the DB5 saloons at their plant in Newport Pagnell. That is the same plant that assembled cars all the way through to the Vanquish in 2007 before they ceased production but then returned a decade later with the first of their continuation models, the DB4 GT of which they made 25, followed by the DB4 GT. GT Zagato, of which they made 19 to mimic the original number that were made, and now the 25 of these, all in silver birch, but the number chosen to match the number of James Bond movies to date. As you look around it though, it is elegant, it is stylish, it's a DB5. It is one of the most beautiful cars that has ever been made, and they teamed up with many of the original partners from the cars back in the 60s to create this as precise to that original as possible. We've got a 4-litre flat six naturally aspirated engine making about 290 horsepower we've got a five speed manual gearbox but under the skin is where we have all of the features the gadgets that were introduced for james bond the things around the front for example like the number plate that rotates through three different settings the one we're going to use aml1 along with a french plate and the famous bmt 216a we've got the battering rams both front and rear which extend forwards and backwards the indicator lamps here fold open to allow the machine guns to slide out They've used original sound effects from the movie as well. And have a look inside here. Check this out. Beautiful place, isn't it? Inside, but in the center console, in the armrest here, we have the controls. This is where you can rotate your number plates, the bullet shield at the back, the rams front and rear, the oil slick, rear smoke. We will go through all of these. Then inside here on the shift knob, we have the legendary ejector seat button. While we don't actually have an ejector seat for many reasons, there is the removable hatch up on the roof to represent where that would be. This is the radar screen, we've got a telephone, but otherwise it's a DB5. It just happens to be a brand new modern one, completely unlike anything I guess I've experienced. Now these cost 2.75 million pounds plus taxes. That's 3.3 million pounds here in the UK. Normally they're for use on private land or track only. This being the factory prototype means it's registered, making today even more exclusive. So all we need to do is to rotate the plates, hop on board and go drive the Goldfinger DB5 continuation. Of course, one of the most important things is to have the number plate showing correctly for driving this car. And it literally can rotate, as you see, to AML1 on which I will be driving it today. That is really, really cool to watch. And outside of that, I guess it's just going to be like driving the original DB5. So I'm gonna head around to the front, jump on board, and then go and drive in this beautiful, majestic thing. It's my turn then, on board the car, clutch down, let's just turn on the ignition, start it up very quickly. Okay, we're gonna put the headlights on I think, there we go, headlights on. This is, I mean it feels like a 1960s DB5, right? This feels like period car. We've got our fly-off handbrake, that red light was letting us know. Then we can go into first gear, we've got the literal wing mirrors. 
This is my first time driving a classic Aston and it's the DB5 Goldfinger continuation. Departing from here at Stoke Park, a legendary venue. It was on the golf courses here where there was a rather famous scene back in the movies. Needs positive inputs. Obviously, bear with me while I learn a little bit about how to drive it and contemplate if when we're going past speed cameras later on, I can flip the number plates. That would be a little bit on the cheeky side. How amazing is this? This is really cool. Driving a James Bond DB5 continuation. Aside from the fact that it's exceptionally valuable, as a work of art, as a, a beautiful thing to be piloting. I mean, just look around the dashboard, look at all of these dials and displays and the styling of everything. We'll have a full run through of the gadgets when we do get to works at the other end. But to head from one such venue to another, obviously with a navigation system to help guide us because cars back in the 60s did not have sat navs. Um, yeah, this is, this is already feeling pretty cool. <laughs> I'm getting used to it, a little bit of driving later, working out what I've got to do. Obviously, very old school feel and sitting in something that's so small as well, you can see everything around you. It's quite awkward having the mirrors out literally on the wings, wing mirrors as they used to be, not door mirrors. But this, I mean, it's just an ultimate driving experience, isn't it? Not the smoothest of shifts there, I apologize for that, but away we go into second gear. I don't really know how to comment on it. I just feel like I've gone back in time, back to the 60s, and a little bit of that, uh, that James Bond feeling. It's taking me some learning to get used to the gearbox, and of course we now have some unfortunate inclement weather. So we've got the wipers here, we can run those for a few different settings. That does the job just right, just fine. Oh, listen to the sound of this. The engine, they completely put it through CT scanners to recreate the original engine in the new car. Again, with the existing partners, with all of the original partners. Wherever possible, the team responsible for this have made it the same as a 1960s DB5. Everything, right from top to bottom. And it's, it, it feels like it, it's crazy that it's, but it runs perfectly. I mean, it runs, it's brand new. So everything you, you would expect that works exactly right. And it, I, this is awesome. We are definitely mixing icons today. The weather outside is about as iconic British as it can get. Gloomy, miserable, and generally not much fun. Aston Martin, James Bond. The sound of the engine as you start getting higher up through the revs. This just feels so, so awesome on the countryside roads. Obviously you've got these sun visors, which are more like sunglasses. They're just tinted glass instead of the modern era of sun visors. We don't have any windows we can lower, obviously, period, back in the, in the 60s. Just the, uh, everything about this is so infinitely cool to drive. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's a unique experience for me, driving through the English countryside. It's something like this. I am definitely starting to get the hang of driving this. It takes a little bit of learning, but when you get into the rhythm, into the groove, and start getting a feel for it, my goodness, it is rewarding. It feels, I mean, there's nothing else like this old school driving experiences. We forget in the modern era, having these proper manuals, the feel of a gigantic wooden steering wheel like this. The completely different dynamics of a car like this in terms of how it actually drives on the road as well. And as we're exploring through the gloomier than desired English countryside, you know, this is, this is a very picturesque place to be driving this kind of thing and just, you know, this making this day of it. And we haven't yet been through all of the gadgets and gizmos, all of which we need to explore to see and demo what this car can actually do. By the way, there's one fun thing down here. If I open up this door pouch, we've even got the phone here. So have a quick phone call while driving. Obviously not anymore, not allowed, but still cool nonetheless. Where we are arriving now then is the historical home of Aston Martin. This area, you can see just to the left here, Aston Martin Works is there center for everything effectively. They have the dealership, the showroom, you can see the lineup of new cars, DBXs, uh, DBSs as well, but behind is where the magic happens for cars like this. So I suppose we are going to pull it up here. I will do my best to park it in reverse and turn around, slotting in between the DB9 and the DBX here. This is 
it's gonna be my first time reversing it. We go like that, yeah, that works. You can see really well behind. Makes life quite a lot easier. With the uh, vision that we've got, I will take this parking spot, just like that. No reversing cameras. So, as if by magic, we are nice and straight. We will use the fly-off handbrake, pull it very firm, make sure we hold here. And there we go. My drive in the car that we now need to go find it all about. Having arrived here at Aston Martin Works, this is actually the first of the 25 customer cars of the DB5 Goldfinger continuation. And the owner of this car has kindly allowed us to experiment with some of these gadgets. Now we'll have to go outside again to try things like the smoke screen and the oil spill. But while we're in here, we can check out the machine guns, the rotating number plates, the rams that come out of the front. And to do that, it is all through the controls on the inside. Now we had a quick look earlier at the control panel in the central console where you can do most of this. But there's actually another thing that they've made about the car specifically. So I need to put the ignition into accessory mode, turn that to the left. In here, we have our main panel, and there's more, by the way, to show you, including the secret button down here, which opens up the radar control. We'll have a proper look at that outside. But behind this, there is also an extra box back here, which is the master control to do the gadgets. So we'll hop on out. I'll show you how some of this works. We can have a quick run through and give it a go. So in here, I need to turn this on. When I put the key in, it activates, turns on as the master. But then we need to come and have a quick look around the very front at how exactly all of this works. So if I did the oil slick right now, that would be a bit of a problem. But let's try the front rams. If you press up, those literally come out of the front of the car. Those would be helpful in some parking situations, I think. And you can pop them straight back away again. You see the rears work exactly the same coming out from the bumpers. Then we've got the guns. I mean, the guns, this is one of the coolest things. So if I press up, have a look at this. The machine guns actually come out of the front. Now what happens on the control panel is if you press the red fire button, have a listen to this and a watch of the guns. Yes, you saw that correctly. Literally the same sound effects as in the movies, as used with a number of the features inside the car. That, that, that's addictive. That's really cool. And then you can press down and they tuck back away again. Just like that. The other thing, of course, at the front is to do with the number plate, where you can toggle it through the different plates. The exact plates used in the movies. We've got the French plate, and then we've got the Lugano Swiss plate as well, and shuffle them back to our famous BMT 216A, all controlled through this or through the inside. And the way they've done this basically is to use the red ejector seat button as the go mode on whichever setting you've got it actually activated. Turn that off, hop in, oh, pop the key away, pop back in, turn off the accessory mode, because then we can go and see the things at the back, the bulletproof screen that you have and the smoke and the oil. Outside with the car, and it is time to see some of the other things it can do. And the first to demonstrate is the shield here, the bullet resistant shield that was actually tested, which raises up, and obviously protects you if the car behind is shooting with a machine gun at you. That's pretty cool. There's a lockout on the boot so that you don't open it by mistake at the same time. But then the next two are really pretty cool. So the first one is to demonstrate the oil slick. Come and have a look at this. When you open that, they open up, the indicators, and then underneath is a little water jet that when I press fire, <laughs> literally sprays the car behind. It's water, not oil. Of course, got to be environmentally friendly, but that's that easy. And then close that back up again, and they tuck away. But now one of the big ones is the smoke screen. So we will prime that. It takes just a moment. You should hear it coming into life. And now I'm going to stand back a bit and get ready for firing it. Take a, take a watch of what's about to happen. It shoots out a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. I could probably go and hit one in the smoke that's coming out of the back of the car. <laughs> Have you ever seen a car do that? <laughs> and then we can close that off. And also, obviously, the rams at the back as well. You can open those up. Those extend out towards the back. So this is a car straight out of Q's toy shop, the DB5. Also, I want to show you inside the boot itself as well. 
and let me just turn this off for a moment and tuck it away because back here if we open up the luggage space we also have back in there the tire shredding kit it's actually really nicely finished everything about the car is finished beautifully as you can see even the inline, inner liner of the boot where on a movie car you might expect to see weird cuts and cables and all sorts of things and to close this back down give it a lift so it locks and then drop it into place done and we've obviously got the number plates which at the back rotate just as they do at the front with this he says activate it and rotate it which way does it go there we go we can go through our different number plates that we have on this car this is the one that we drove earlier yes that is a lot of fun a very, very cool thing to be able to demo it as well from the master control box rather than having to be sat inside the car so that you can see everything the car is doing. Now the other thing I need to show, if you just have a look through from this side, is the radar screen inside. I'm going to run around to the other side of the car very quickly so that I can show you how this works. You can hear the sound effects. If we just press here, the secret button, load that up, you have the radar screen making the exact same sounds that you have heard in the movie again, inside here. <laughs> That's really fun. Everything about this is so fun. You know, all these details and the ejector seat button. If you press the ejector button, by the way, I'm just gonna pop this back in here. What it does is it loosens the pins for the roof control. So we'll just turn this off for a moment. So just step out just for a moment. It actually loosens the pins so that you can then take off the roof panel, this is an option. Every car is in silver birch, the same look exactly as in the movie. You can choose left-hand drive or right-hand drive and you can choose whether to have the removable roof panel. It would do the pins and then you can lift it out and take it away. Quite cool, hey? Quite cool that the car does the things we dream of cars doing and this one actually does it. We're going to go for a whistle-stop tour as to how these cars come together, but this is quite an interesting place to begin because this is the original DB5 Goldfinger continuation mule car. Aston Martin Works purchased the DB5 that we have in front of us, kept the bodywork, but put it with the new engine and gearbox and the underpinnings in order to go through the testing processes and cycles to work out how exactly it was going to come together before moving on towards where we're going to go next. This is fascinating, where a lot of it happens. One of the early stages here, we have the steel chassis and the frame welded together, powder coated, finished here by works, and you can start to see how the panels come together. And this is actually done using equipment from the period. You have the English wheels, which are used for the rolling of the body panels. As you can see here, the front of the roof section, which has to be rolled to the exact shape in both directions. You can even see lightly the marks from how that's been done, a skill that takes a lifetime to master. Up here, we've got some of the cars starting to come together. You can take a look at how this actually works. The panels are actually wrapped tightly around the body, held in place literally through that process. A few of the cars going through various stages, they're assembled three at a time, and it actually takes four and a half thousand hours per car to bring them together, as opposed to 220 for a DBS or a DB11 on the main Gaiden production line. And then we arrive on the assembly line half a century after the last DB5s were put together here by Aston Martin in Newport Pagnell. This is the line, of course, that was home to the DB4 GT, the DB4 GT Zagato, and now the DB5 Goldfinger continuations. The body arrives here, and as you can see at the first stage, it receives things like the wiring loom. We've got the tanks back here for the smoke and for the water. It will then proceed, continuing along, building up towards the final station, towards the end, where it will be started for the first time and then taken onwards to be completed. But four and a half thousand hours from start through to this stage, through towards the end, significantly more than your typical production vehicle, like a Golf, for example, which takes about 25 hours in total for assembly. And this, well, this is just the start before it becomes the finished car that I've been able to enjoy and experience today. After all of that work, you come to the completed product. In this case, customer car number one. And today I was driving the second of the two prototypes. But what an experience to get behind the wheel of a new DB5. To discover the gadgets that the car has on offer and to get a feel for what it's like to drive. Something truly, truly special, spectacular even, and a beautiful, beautiful thing as well. The DB5s have always been amongst the most iconic of the classic cars. Nothing more so though than James Bond's BMT 
A, now recreated with the DB5 Goldfinger continuation. A huge thanks to Aston Martin and Aston Martin Works for the opportunity to drive the car today, to be able to share with you what it's all about and to see a little bit behind the scenes as well. This was pretty special, something I won't forget in a hurry, driving James Bond's Aston Martin DB5. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.